Hello there all, welcome to Yosakura. In this video, I'll show you how to use custom channels and mats while doing 3D compositing in Nuke. Now let me first start by explaining exactly what is it that I'm trying to achieve. Now here, I have a very simple 3D scene with two objects in the foreground and a background element. All of these are 3D objects and because of which when I, once I go ahead and actually hit render what I end up with in the alpha channel is something which looks like this. A completely white alpha channel because every pixel which has an object gets a white value. But that usually is not exactly what I'm looking for. What I'm usually looking for is something which looks like this. I want individual objects to have alpha and the background element usually to not have an alpha. Also, maybe sometimes I have a situation where I want to isolate only, let's say, the foreground object. I don't want the background object. In such a case, I want a mat only for the foreground element like this. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to achieve these different results. Basically, I'm going to show you how to create mats for particular objects in your scene. Now. Before you go ahead further with the tutorial, please know that I've gone ahead and created this entire tutorial even in text form. You can go ahead just read this entire script and understand exactly what's going on and follow along. To get this file, you can go ahead and follow the link in the description. Now to get started, let's go ahead and first create a simple mat which looks something like this where we have each object with a particular alpha channel. So to do that, let's come back to our composite here. As you can see, I have a simple scene with a spear which encompasses the whole scene. And I have two spears here in the center. They have been lit by a simple directional light which is facing off in one particular direction. And also, I have a camera which is looking at the whole scene. When I render this out, obviously as you already know, there is no alpha. Now, to get an actual channel there or to get the alpha channel or the mat, what I'm going to make use of is my custom channels or adding custom channels. To do that, I can go ahead and use add channel, this add channel node, I'll just open that up and here it lets me add in any number of channels I want and whatever value I want to give those channels. So now, uh, now that I've added in this add channels node, I just want to choose a new channel. It could be any name. So let's go ahead and just call it simple mask. So here I have a mask channel. I just go ahead choose that. Now once you have this mask channel selected it really has no value yet. So let's go ahead and actually look at that. If I go to the add channel mask node you should be able to see the checkerboard which is the one which it's connected to but you can't really see any other results. Main reason being you had to go to the mask channel set and even when you come here you will see that it's completely black. Reason being the color value is not yet set. Now we can go ahead and start setting this to whatever number we want. So I've set it to 1 and this gives me pure 1 in the red channel or basically the mask channel. Because it's an individual channel it's set only to red. Now if I come to red you can see it's an actual alpha channel. Now once I've actually set this what that does is give me that particular channel on this spear. So let's come to the scene and here let's zoom in onto these spears here. Okay. So now that I'm here near the spears, I can go ahead and shift over to the mask channel and you should be able to see that this spear in the front has a red tinge compared to everything else. So let me deselect the spear on the outside and you should be able to see this only one spear has the color. So that means this channel has been added to the object. Coming back to the scanline renderer now, you should be able to see that when I go to the mask channel, I can only see this object. Coming back to RGB, I have the same result. Coming back to alpha, I still have the plain white. Now, similarly, <coughs> excuse me, similarly I want the same mask applied to the other mask, uh, other object too. So I can just go ahead Alt K on this uh, mask and I can add that to this object too. Now when I go back to the mask channel you should be able to see that both these objects have the same mask applied. Now this is quite easy. I was able to add in these different masks but let's just say that I wanted to isolate an individual object. What would I do in that case? So to do that I can add in a new channel. I can call it anything I want. So let's go ahead. I go to the new channel I'll call it let's say layer 1 itself and I'll call it yes 1. 
So it has channel S1 and let's say S2 for spear 1 and spear 2. For uh, some convenience cases, I'm just going to give it smaller alphabets to start with. Okay, so S1 and S2. S1 is going to be the front uh, spear and S2 is going to be the back spear. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a full white value and for now I'm going to remove the S2 from here. I go ahead copy this, paste it and paste it in here. I go back into here and give it only value in S2. So what I've done is I have two add channels. The first one here is giving value only to the spear and that is giving the channel S1 and the second one here is giving me only the channel S2 on the spear. So what exactly is the benefit of that? Let's come back to my scanline render node. Over here I'll go back to the channel, layer 1 channel set and when I do that you should be able to see that I have red color for the front spear, green for the back or in other words I have a mat for this and a mat for that. So as easily I was able to isolate different objects, get different mats and do every anything I want with these objects. So I can go color correct them individually or, or whatever uh, else you can think of. Now this is just one step of the whole process. So let me go ahead and show you one last thing here. You can not only add a channel and create a mat for the whole object, you can also plug in channels as textures. So to do that let me bring in a noise node. Okay, So this noise node by default is going to emit in the RGBA channel. As you can see the noise has been applied to the spear. So if I enable and disable this you can see the spear is changing. What I can now do is go ahead and output it into any different channel I want. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and output that into a new channel I want. So I can go ahead select the layer 1 which I already have. So I have layer 1 S1 and S2. I'll go ahead and put in an S3 channel. So OK. So I have an S3 channel and this time I'm going to make sure the noise is emitting only in the S3 channel. Once that is done I can come back here, go to my uh, layer 1 channel set and you should be able to see that here if I switch over to my blue channel only this object has the texture applied and the seam is visible because of the object so I can go ahead and rotate it 180 degrees so the seam is not. So quite easily I was able to go ahead and create a mat for the front object for a back object and also go ahead and create an actual pass. Let's say you wanted a specific texture created only in one pass. You can go ahead and make use of this method. So that was a very simple tutorial on exactly how to create your own channels and use them as masks or uh, create them as different passes for compositing. Uh, where you might want to use this is when you want to isolate different objects or if you have several different textures you want to composite once your scene has been rendered. This is the same method I make use of in the, the, the procedural texturing of planets tutorial to create the city lights, the oceans, rivers and all of that stuff. So uh, if you have any doubts with this tutorial you could first go ahead and uh, just walk through the tutorial uh, this file which I have linked into the description and exactly see what's happening at every step. I've also gone ahead and added the special shuffle nodes which actually show you what's happening at every stage also. Okay guys so that's it for this video. If you have any critics, comments or doubts after watching it you can go ahead put those in the comments below and I'll definitely get back to you. So I really hope you guys have found this video useful. I'll see you in the next one.